Hello and welcome back again to our uh, discussion of time value of money, um, dealing with annuities. Um, just going to do one more example just to make sure that we've solidified it. Um, you know, obviously, once you've watched the previous video and you understand what the annuity is doing, he could kind of just replace any of the variables and ask you for the other one. Um, so not not that crazy. Uh, let's just do. As opposed to calculating the future value of an annuity, let's calculate the present value of the annuity. So, again, let's just pop up a timeline. You know, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Um, and then, let's say that there are payments that we are going to make into the account of $100 um, every single year for the next five years and there's an interest rate of 10%. Um, you know, the future value is zero, let's say. Um, what's the present value? What's the present value um, of this <coughs> of this cash flow series, of this fixed cash flow series? So, you know, there's minus 100, minus 100, um, you know, for the next five years, if someone came to you and said, you know, if you put in $100 into this account for the next five years, what is the present value of that security um, today? So that's it. You just pop that into the calculator and solve. Um, so I'm going to do that right now. Um, present value is what we're solving for. Future value is zero. Um, the payment that we're going to put in is negative, don't forget, that has to go in as negative because they are negative cash outflows. Um, the interest rate is 10, uh, the number of years is 5, compute present value, and that comes out to 379. Um, so 379.08 um, dollars. That's how much <coughs> it's worth <coughs> putting today. Um, so. Yeah, that's really all there is to it. Now, let's move on. Um, there is a certain kind of annuity, um, and it's called a perpetuity. I'm just going to write that over here. Um, these are securities, um, which are, are very rare, but it's basically a stream of equal payments at fixed intervals, just like an annuity. But they are, in fact, considered, or sorry, expected, um, to continue on forever. Um, so it's pretty interesting. Um, I actually think that there was a certain type of security called a console, um, which was a perpetual bond that was issued by the British government um, to consolidate past debts. That's why it was called a console. Um, but basically, in general, any perpetual bond will, will be called a console. Um, I think they're pretty rare right now. It's not, you know, it's not really common to find securities that are going to pay forever. But um, it's actually pretty similar to the calculation made for preferred stock because preferred stock, well, as long as you hold on to it, it does pay you that dividend yield, um, that preferred dividend. So it's kind of similar, but you know, again, a perpetuity is, is simply like, you know, an annuity is above, um, you know, like that timeline that we had seen. Um, but as opposed to it stopping after five years, you know that n is is kind of is infinity. Um, so how do you how do you solve for that? Because you know obviously there's no infinity button um, on the financial calculator. You can't exactly put that in. Um, so this is the point where you kind of have to uh, do a little bit of math. Um, I strongly suggest bringing a regular calculator if you've used the TI-83 or whatever kind of scientific calculator or graphing calculator you used to use at high school or you're using in your other classes that may involve some uh, mathematical functions. Um, I strongly suggest using that because a lot of the time the financial calculators can be pretty counterintuitive and very difficult to use when it comes to, to, to basic math. Um, the idea over here uh, it's very simple. If you are ever given a question on perpetuities, it will be asking you about the present value of a perpetuity. And yes, it does seem a little counterintuitive that there could be a finite value today for something that's going to pay you infinitely. Um, but we're not we're not going to get into it. So you know, present value of a perpetuity um, is equal to its payment uh, divided by i, and that's really all there is to it. Um, if you were told, you know, if you were given a, a perpetuity and it gave you, um, and it gave you a certain percentage, 
um, then you would just take the percentage. Um, it would take the percentage of it. Sorry, sorry. If it, if it gave you like a, in a preferred stock, for example, if you're given a dividend yield, you take the the the, the percentage of its face value. Um, but over here, when we're dealing with perpetuities, it's very simple. It's uh, over here. You just ask yourself, you know, what's the present value of a security? For example, that pays you a hundred dollars um, every single year forever. Um, and you divide that through by, let's say, an interest rate of 10%. So it's paying you 100 bucks every single year, and the interest rate is 10%. You know, how much would you pay um, for that perpetuity? And, you know, obviously, if you just plug that in, or you can just see it, uh, then you'll know that how much you should pay uh, as a present value. Present value is the, the value today. How much should I pay for this security, which is paying 100 bucks every year forever, um, and it's given, you know, an interest rate um, of 10%. Um, you should pay no more um, and no less than a thousand dollars. That's how much that's worth. So that's also just a basic problem that you may be given um, on this perpetuity. Don't let it throw you off. It's just an annuity, but it goes on forever. Um, so if you ever see the word security that pays you forever, um, or you ever see a word, um, you know, that says they're expected to continue indefinitely, you know, uh, let's just write those down in case you're coming back to these videos. Um, when you're reviewing forever or in I know I'm writing sideways now indefinitely um, you know these are the keywords to look for which means he's telling you about a perpetuity uh, and if he is then just use this formula uh, plug in the payment plug in the I and then it just spits out the present value and that will be a dollar value and that's it he could also give you an interest rate and tell you how much it's worth and ask you to solve backwards you know what's the what's the yearly payment um, you know again you just have to push I up here so you take the present value and multiply it by I don't forget that these are being held as percentages though so 10% over here you know you can't just write it as 10 that is 0 0.1 right um, yeah, so I think that's that's basically it for, for annuities and perpetuities. Um, next time what we're going to do is we're going to get to cash flows that are not even. So far we've had very nice cash flows um, which are the same every single year, or perpetuity which is the same every single year forever. Um, but we're going to get to uneven cash flows because I'm sure it's come across your mind um, that you know it doesn't doesn't always pay you out evenly, or you don't always have to pay in evenly. So an uneven or a non-constant cash flow is a series of cash flows where the amount varies from one period to the next. Um, and again, you know the uh, you know the the security will will take on the nature such that you have to have to put in um, a certain amount of money or a certain amount of money can be withdrawn um, every single year and you'll be asked to calculate you know what the present value of that security is or what is the future value of that security um, so we'll get to that next time I hope this was helpful